So, Phil, what are we up to today? Today we are doing wainscoting, aka paneling. So we're going to be showing you guys at home an easy step-by-step -step guide on how to do it, and we're going to jump straight into it. <laughs> so, Phil, what tools are going to be required for the job today? Not a whole lot. <laughs> so, you're going to need some grab adhesive, and obviously a gun to use that grab adhesive. Chalk line, little angle finder, this one's by Trend some mitre glue, a tape measure, and if you can, this is a little bit of off-cut off scrap that we've cut and measured to 100 mil, and I'll explain that in a bit, and obviously, you're gonna need yourself a mitre saw. So now that Phil's been through the tools with you guys at home, now we need to learn how we're gonna turn this molding into a nice little frame. Right, so your first job before you start doing your panelling is deciding the gaps that you're gonna want top, bottom, on the sides, and in between your panels. We're going for 100 mil because that's a sensible size, a gap. So rather than walk around with our tape measure, measuring everywhere, what we've done, we've got ourselves an old piece of scrap, we've cut it to exactly 100 mil, and then all we're gonna do is walk around marking the top, Marking the bottom and then marking the sides like so. This is probably that's better, like that, like this. Now that you guys at home have marked out the top and the bottom of your margin, now it's time to work out how many panels. And Phil's going to explain how. So, deciding on how many panels, there is no right or wrong. You can do whatever you want to do. We're going to be doing three because that's what we think is going to look right. But because you're doing it in chalk, it doesn't matter. You can have a look and then you can decide whether you like it or not. You're going to decide how many panels you've got. We want three. So if you have three panels, you're going to have four spacings. You've got an extra spacing to the amount of panels you've got. We've got a 100 mil gap. So we need to take 100 mil gaps times four which equals 400, you take your total length of your wall, whatever yours is, and the total amount of gaps, and you take that from the total. Once you've done that, that measurement you're left with, you then divide by the amount of panels you want. We want three, so 2710 divided by three gives us 903 millimeters. 903 is gonna be our panel. So now that Phil's all explained the complicated maths of working out where your panels are gonna go, now we're gonna get some chalk on the wall, and that's where the chalk line comes in. So Phil, how do we use a chalk line? All you do, you take your line out of your chalk line, pull it out, Brad's gonna take one end, I'm gonna take the other. You come down to your two marks that we did, you pull it nice and tight, hold it, and you give it a nice little ping, and that is as easy as it is. So we're going to repeat the process on the bottom section of the wall. Go on. So now that you guys at home should have your top line in, your bottom line in, now we're going to start by working our way off the edge. We've marked 100 mil from the edge and we're going to pull a string line just like so. And that now. <laughs> is what we're going to work off of. Right, so now that you've done your top line, your bottom line and one of your sides, what you're going to do is them panel sizes you worked out earlier, we're now going to measure off that 100mm mark we've got there. So Brad holds that on there perfectly. And we add a size of 903. So whatever your panel size is, you're going to mark that on that line there. Then take your little spacer block that you made for yourself, whatever spacing you decided on. And we're going to put another mark there. And then we're going to repeat. So this is a space. That's a panel, next panel, next space. So you're just gonna repeat that, top and bottom. And the reason we're doing top and bottom is That's because we're bottom. not putting this in level. We're putting this in parallel. So this gap's the same all the way. This might not be level, this might not be level, but they're parallel, so it looks good when you look at it. Let's crack on. So now that Phil has marked out all the panels and he's left the 100 mil gap in between each panel, we're gonna chalk line these sections out like so, repeating the same process, pull tension, get your assistant, ping it. To pull it like he's doing a crossbow. <laughs> get so angry when I do this. 
That's acceptable, actually. <laughs> Do that on every one. So we're going to repeat that process all the way down the straight section that we're on. So once you've pulled all your chalk lines, this is when you can look at your design and decide, you know what, I hate it, I'm gonna change it. This is why we do it in chalk, because you can visually see what it's gonna look like before making your final decision and deciding that is what I wanna go with. We're happy with our three panels, so that's what we're gonna be going with. And now, after that, you can move on to cutting some actual timber. Right, so before we go to the saw, one last measurement you now need to make and that is the width of your panels, which we already know are 903, double check to make sure, and the height of your panels, as a 700, check your own ones and do what yours are. And then we're gonna count how many uprights we're gonna need for the section we're doing. So this flat section here, we need one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know we need six of these, and however many top and bottom, six again, we need six of these and all we're going to do is go to the saw and cut these at that measurement we don't need to come back and forth right now we're at the saw what we're going to be doing is putting 45 degree angles on our moldings so we're going to start by putting one on the end and once you've got one on the end We then take our tape measure and we measure the tip, the furthest point. So from there, and we know we've got our measurements of 700, so you do your measurements, and we're gonna mark the same end, like so, at 700. And we're just gonna mark the face like that. And what we're doing here is we're cutting these two angles into each other. So we'll spin that back round to 45, Hold that on there, bring our saw down, check where our blade's gonna land. Cutting on the waist side, remember. We'll spin that through. And that is what you want. Two of the same. Don't get rid of this. This is now gonna be our measuring stick. So we're gonna keep this and mark the other five that we need, however many you need. Keep this one, and this is we only use this one. And then again, there's our mark that we've just made. Back round to 45, and back in again. And repeat that for all of your measurements on all of the pieces that you need, and then we'll go back inside. Right, now that you've cut all your different lengths, we're going to lay them out on the floor in the order they're going to go back together. We're going to get ourselves some mitre bond, which is a glue and an activator. And we're just going to do each mitre as we go. So you put glue on one side like so. Nice. And then we get the activator and we spray the opposite. We spray or we spray? One of the two. Spray that and then how I do is it, I put the point together and then I roll it in, make sure it's flat, make sure it's all lined up, hold it together for 10 seconds, let it fully set, and once that's done, it should be golden. Bop. And that's what you're looking for, and we're just gonna repeat that on all the corners, and notice that I've got something underneath, just to protect the floor while I'm doing this, because we don't want the glue going on the floor. Do the next one, splish, 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 splodge. Get your Nan's airspray, bosh, bosh, bosh. Push them flat, put the corners in, and then roll it together, making sure it's nice and tight, and lined up. And when you come to the last one, the way I do the last one is I apply glue to both sides. I 
I use activator on one side that I'm going to be putting together first because this glue won't set up immediately until you use the activator hold that one get that set and once that's set we then move over to the other side spray the activator on and do the final mitre like so you should be left with a nice picture frame that looks like that so you can put a picture of a carrot in it or whatever you like or you can stick it to your wall like you're supposed to do that on all your panels and then we'll get ready to glue them on so you should have your three panels or your four panels or your 20 panels whatever you've decided on we've laid them out where they're going we've got ourselves some grab grab adhesive this is sticks like <clears throat> exactly what you think I was about to say is what it's called so we're gonna put a bead on the back always remember squiggle it back and forth and remember not to put too much on because obviously it's all gonna squidge out all over your wall and it's more for you to clean up so just a small bead especially for something like this you're not trying to hold the weight of the weld up and then what you're going to need then is either a pin gun, but don't panic if you haven't got a pin gun. Get yourself some panel pins. Use the panel pins to hold it in place while the adhesive sets, but don't sink them all the way in because you can pull them back out once this dries and then fill the little pin holes. So you're just going to hold it up and if all is well, everything should line up with your marks that you've done when we were setting out. Oh, so lucky. So you hold it in place like so. Don't worry about any of this business, just work your way along, get it roughly on the marks, on your chalk lines that we did earlier, and put yourself either a panel pin, or a normal pin gun pin, in each corner, once you're on your lines. Same on the bottom. Make sure that's pressed in. Don't go mad with the pins because obviously the more pins you put in it the more you've got to fill over when it's all dried and then we're going to repeat that on all the panels and then we'll look how wonderful it looks at the end. So that's another panel ready to go on and just remember when you're lifting these into place always use proper form, you don't want to hurt your back. So that's your panels all pinned on and glued on. If you're using panel pins, remember to leave them sticking out. So once this goes off, you can get them back out nice and easy, especially if you've got a brick wall, because you'll have a nightmare sinking them in. And you should end up with something that looks like this. And if you check, if you follow all our calculations, our measurements, you should all end up on those chalk lines you pulled earlier. Mwah! So now we're gonna move on to the more awkward stuff. Right, so now that we've done the straightforward panels, you might come up against something like this. So your panel is going to wrap around the corner. Don't be scared, it's not that difficult, it's not that bad. So you just need to work out this angle. If you go to our dado rail video, we go into full explanation on how to work this out. And it's already written on the wall for us. So go watch that and you'll see how to do that. All we've got here is a few scraps that we've been cutting off our lengths and they fit these pieces that we need. We've put our 45 mitres on that are gonna sit in these corners like so. And all we're gonna do with these, we're gonna sit them in position, mark the very corner of the wall, so this bead here, we mark that corner, mark the direction of cut, and then we just put a 21.5 degree, because that's what we've got here, or your angle. It can be 45, whatever you need. And we're going to do the same on this side. So that's going to sit there. Again, mark the corner, mark the direction of cut, 
and the same on the bottom, both sides. Mark the corner, direction of cut, and here. Do some side head action here. Mark the cut point and the direction of cut. So all we're going to do with those, we're going to cut them like this direction rather than this direction. So we'll go to the saw and then we'll show you what it's going to look like once it's all cut. So before we was cutting like this, now I'm going to be standing these up because we want to cut in a different direction, different plane. So we had a 21.5, so we set the saw to 21 and a half. Lock that off. Put our saw on our mark. And cut. So you've come back from the saw. Hello. So you've got your 45s there that we've already done on these original panels here, the easy cuts. And then we've got the different direct different axes we've got that 21.5 we was talking about so when you put, bring these together they should connect nicely like so and then these cuts here are just your standard 45s as we already shown you before that will sit on there so what we're going to do we're going to get this all glued up same as the other panels and we'll show you the finished result and that is how easy it is to make these panels. They look super complicated, but they're really not once you break them down into the angles that we've just shown you. So now nah, let's move on. Right, so now we've moved on to the slightly complicated sections where we're changing levels, but it may be in your panels depending on the sizes, etc. that you've chosen. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your block that we made earlier. This is a 100 mil block and we're going to mark everywhere along the top, the sides, the bottom and once you've done all that what you're looking for is these little intersections here these little intersections you need these you can't put a, I need to cover this, you can't put a level line down because you think that that's going to, because that's not how it works the angle's actually going to be off it's not vertical, all right? So just bear that in mind. That's why we need to run this block. So all, all I've done for these outlets here to go around them is I've just grabbed my angle finder that I was using. I've sat that on top. I've just marked around them just to give me a little bit of a border. You can butt up to them, but I prefer to have this little gap. Makes it more of a feature. Once you've done that, we can now pull our chalk lines. So let's do some chalk lines. Right, as we've come to this little section here, you may notice that we have a curve. And some older staircases like this one, you may have stuff like that. So to save some of the work, you're not going to want to curve this, and that's where you can cut and bend wood. We don't want to get into all that, that's going to be a bit complicated. What we're going to do is we're going to overrun our line. So we've marked all of the straight sections that we've got, not marking the curves, and then we've marked this. And then when we do our chalk lines, we're going to just run this a little bit longer than we need, like this. So if Brad pings that again, and then we'll do the same on this long run. And what that does is that changes this curve into a nice square junction with an angle that we can work out and chop on our miter saw, rather than trying to bend the wood now that you've marked all your boulder line out, for an easy panel like this, we're going to split this into two. It's a bit too big for a single panel. So we're going to split it in two. For something like this, all we're going to do, we're going to measure the total width as is exactly 1500. And we're just going to put ourselves a centre mark here, which is 750. Like so. And then we take our block that we made and we put a little centre mark in that. And we just hold that on there, like so, and put ourselves two lines in. 
And then we're just gonna do that twice and then ping some lines. Right, so you've pulled all your chalk lines, you've stepped back, you've had a look and you're happy with the design and how it's gonna look once it's all finished. Now we need to move on to these angles. So these here, we already know are 90, they're easy peasy. So all these we don't care about, all 90 degrees. But these here are obviously not 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna skim over how to use an angle finder. If you want a full description, head over to our Dado video and there's a full diagram exactly how to do this. But basically what you do, you put your angle finder on the lines that you've pulled. You take your angle, which as is 134, and you deduct that from 180 and then you take that number and divide it by two and for us it's 23 degrees. Now that you guys at home have worked out all your angles, the next step to putting this sort of panel together is you go outside to your chop saw and you cut a load of pieces but just oversize them and then bring them back to the area and then mark the angles while they're here. I'm going to show you how in just a sec. Right, so I've been cutting some of the bits and I've took a little break to explain what I'm doing. Because these panels, all these are all different, nothing's the same. So not unlike when we did those, we had all the same cuts, these are all different. So what I do, I get my piece, I put one angle on, I hold it on my line, and I then mark where it intersects the next line. So I'm marking it here, holding it in place. I then mark the direction of cut, and I'm gonna go cut that at 23 degrees. And you could do it again here. We hold that on. We then transfer where it intersects, and we put the angle of cut. And we'll go and cut that at 23 degrees. And we're gonna do that for all of this section because nothing's the same. So just keep bringing your bits and checking and checking. And then once we cut all this, We'll glue it all up and we'll show you what you're left with. Right, so once you've all glued up, you put all your pieces together, you should end up with something like this or your shape of your stairs. So just double check, we're close to where we want it to be. So that's all gonna work. We now glue this up with your grab adhesive. Right, so now you've got that panel in, we're gonna quickly throw this in. You ain't gonna wanna watch us do all that again because it's the same process. And then we're gonna get you to the main run of the stairs and we're gonna talk you through measuring, marking and fitting that section. And then your stairs will look like this and it'll be wonderful. Now guys, it's time to work out the main part of the staircase, and that's the bit that goes up. And we're gonna actually show you a nice explanation on how to mark out these panels. Let's get to it. Right, so the first job, as on the other panels, we're gonna get our block and we're gonna mark any flat sections like we have everywhere else. So where that turns, we're gonna mark there, we're gonna mark there. Same on the bottom. We've got a bit of a curve here, so we're gonna mark the furthest flat section and a flat section over here, and we'll cover that in a minute. All the way up your stairs, and then once you've done that, we're gonna start doing some chalk lines again. Right, so let's get some lines pulled like we have everywhere else. Remember, overrunning, so we can get those little intersections that we all love. Just like so. We're overrunning our actual marks, pulling it super tight, and then giving it a, no, uh, 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 don't you touch it. And then what we are aiming for are these, like we've shown you, Exactly the same on the long run. We want these intersections here. So we're gonna do all of these bottoms. As you can see on the camera, we're coming up just to the top of the landing and then we're gonna come across here. And then this is our angle again. And that is another reason we're overrunning all our chalk lines because we've got a tiny little step down here, but we don't want all of that in the panels a bit much. It starts looking a bit busy. Right, so now we've marked our top and bottom marks like we did downstairs. The difference is when we're measuring this, we're gonna be measuring horizontally across this space. We're not gonna measure down here because then the panels in the middle will be different size. So we actually have to measure horizontally across this big wall, like so. Brad goes all the way to that far if corner. If you've got a laser. <laughs> a, laser le a laser measure will save you a bit of ag. But, but we're gonna show you the We're gonna pretend way. like we haven't got one. 3470 for us. Three, four, seventy. But if we was to have measured like this, what? we've got 4.3 meters. So you can see 
our calculations won't work out right that way. So measure it horizontally. That's our measurement. You use whatever measurement yours is. And then we're going to decide how many panels we want and then we'll show you the quick calculation and how to mark it out. So now that you've got your measurement, that horizontal measurement we took, that we took, not that angled one, you take that, you decide how many panels you want. We're having four, but however many you want. And then we're gonna add an extra spacing. So an extra spacing for however many panels you have. We've got 100 mil spacing, that little block. So we're gonna times that by five. That's gonna give us 500. We're gonna take that from the total that gives us 2970, or whatever your measurement is. We're then going to divide that by however many panels. We're having four, so that's going to give us a panel size of 742.5. So you will have your panel size, and then now we can start marking them out, chalking them, and then we'll move on to how to cut them and work out the angles. Okay. Right, so now you've done all your boring calculations, you're going to start working out your panels. So we're going to use our block still. We've marked our 100 mil there. And then we're going to measure from our 100 mil block mark our panel size, which is 742.5. Like so. So the first one's nice and simple, isn't it, Phil? Yeah, so it's so not, not complicated. Your mark. And now the only difference is rather than doing everything off of measurements, we're gonna use our level and just put a line down off of this. So if I show you that side, we'll set that to level. Like so, and then we'll put a mark on the bottom side like that. And then all you gotta do is your 100 mil block again, like so. And then measure again, but just remember we're not doing this. We're always measuring horizontally across. So start with your first panel, mark it out, do your block, and then measure off that horizontally across, do your mark, do your level line. Right. If you measure like that, your panels are all gonna end up different sizes. So we've done our first, we've used our block, we've measured horizontally our panel size, we then use our level to transfer the line down. You can put a few marks in if you need it, whatever you need to do. If you've got a laser level, you can use a laser level. And then on the bottom, because we're working top down, we use our block again, horizontally, mark the other side and continue every single panel all the way down to the bottom. And once you've pulled all your chalk lines through, double check your panels, make sure you're happy with the design, same as down this bottom. Work out your angles like we showed you earlier, make your cuts, assemble your panel, slap them on, put some panel pins in until it sets, and you're golden.